This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the esophagitis and its type. So as its name indicates whenever there is the word itis it means inflammation. So this is the inflammation of the esophagus and now according to the cause we have divided this uh, esophagitis into the many types. So one by one we are going to study those and we, first of all we will be studying the most important type that is the reflux esophagitis. As its name indicates, reflux esophagitis means that in this there is a reflux of the acidic stomach contents into the esophagus. Now you know that this is esophagus, this is esophagus, clear? Then this is the lower esophageal sphincter and this is the stomach. Yeah. Now, whenever there is the reflux of the stomach contents into the stomach, it results in the reflux esophagitis. Why? Because it irritates the mucosa of the esophagus, which results in the inflammation of the esophagus. Now, before, uh, now this is also called as the GERD. GERD. Reflux esophagitis also called as the GERD. Gastro esophageal reflux disease clear now before starting the pathogenesis of the disease i would like to tell you one thing more that there are also submucosal glands in the esophagus and they are more prominent in the proximal as well as the distal part of the esophagus and they produce mucin and the bicarbonates so this is also uh, helps in the protection of mucosa of the esophagus now and what is the pathogenesis of this disease reflux esophagitis what is the Pathogenesis. Remember this thing that pathogenesis is the abnormal lower esophageal sphincter relaxation. This is the pathogenesis. And I have written here abnormal because normal physiologically there is a, a relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. And what are those conditions where the normal or physiologic relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter occur. Remember one thing, in the increased intra-abdominal pressure conditions, what are those conditions? For example, coughing, sneezing, vomiting, these are the conditions, straining, bending, so these are the conditions in increased intra-abdominal pressure. Then we also have the gas distension, when the gas distend the stomach, uh, then you can say obesity, pregnancy, tobacco use. They are all the con these are the conditions that is the day in which the physiologic lower esophageal sphincter relaxation occurs. Then they also have decreased gastric emptying. This also relaxes the lower esophageal sphincter. So this is the normal physiologic conditions. These are the normal physiologic conditions which cause the relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter. Other than these conditions, when there is pathologic relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter, it results in the uh, reflux esophagitis. Now, what are the clinical features of this disease? Very easy. First of all is the heart burn. Now, whenever the uh, contents of the stomach or acids or gases they move towards the esophagus so they cause the heartburn they cause the burning sensation in this area that's why it is called as the heartburn the second clinical feature is the dysphagia very important and very common clear now we are moving on to the treatment of this disease what is the treatment of this disease so treatment treatment is the PPIs and the H2 blockers or the antagonists. PPIs are the proton pump inhibitors and the H2 blockers. Now, uh, these, uh, the function of these PPIs and H2 blockers is to decrease the acid secretion. Now, one question may arise here that why we are decreasing the acidic secretion uh, of the stomach the major problem is in the esophagus. So why we are decreasing the acidic secretion of the stomach? So the answer is that uh, when we will be decreasing the acidic secretion of the stomach, so the stomach in the stomach there will be less acid and the contents will be less acidic. 
so when these less acidic contents they reflux in the esophagus they will causing the less damage to the esophagus in this way this is a symptomatic treatment clear that's why we are giving here ppis and the s2 blockers to decrease acid secretion so that there will be decrease or less damage to the esophagus clear this is the treatment now we are moving on towards the complication of this disease complication that when the patient is left untreated so what will be uh, it leading to what are the consequences what are the complications you can say so complication first is the ulceration after inflammation when chronic inflammation occur it may lead to the ulceration ulceration means a uh, volume of phenomena of the or you can say the uh, the mucus the mucus lining it is disturbed then after ulceration if there is a rupture of the vessel so rupture of the vessel may cause hematemesis hematemesis means blood in formating then we have the third one that is the melena melena means blood in stool and the last one uh, that is the barrett's esophagus final condition final complication of the barrett esophagus this is a separate topic but here i am giving a brief introduction that when the esophagus is continuously stimulated continuously irritated so what happens that the uh, epithelium of the esophagus and you can say mucosa epithelium of the esophagus it changes this is called as the metaplasia and this is the barrett's esophagus clear so this we will be discussing in the detail afterwards now one uh, thing that is left is the morphology morphology of this disease what are the morphology features first of all the morphology feature is you can say redness neutrophils infiltration eosinophils infiltration and one thing more that the lamina propria it has the papilla clear now these papilla normally they do not extend to the upper third of the epithelium but in this condition the lamina propria extends to the upper third of the epithelium so with this we have complete our first time that is the reflux esophagitis now moving on towards the second type that is the eosinophilic esophagitis clear i am writing it here eosinophilic second one eosinophilic esophagitis as its name indicates that there will be a large number of the eosinophilic infiltration in this condition clear now what is the cause of the disease cause is the food allergy maybe a patient may allergic to some food substance that he have eaten so this is the food allergy is the main cause now the symptoms they are similar to the gerd like symptoms dysphagia and similar to the reflux esophagitis but what is the difference of the with the reflux esophagitis that is in this condition we cannot give ppis ppis are not effective why because in this condition there is no reflux of the contents no reflux in the uh, in the reflux esophagitis there was no reflux of the contents but in the eosinophilic there is no reflux so when there is no reflux so why we will be decreasing the acid secretion by giving the ppis there is no need to give ppis so that's why here ppis will not relieve the symptoms now moving on towards our third type third type it is the chemical and infectious is the esophagitis now as its name indicates the chemical it may be any chemical any substance irritant acid alkali that is in the the patient and which results in the uh, chemical esophagitis then we have the infectious infectious means any infectious agent that is causing it maybe fungi causing candidiasis it may be a virus that may be herpes simplex virus that may be cytomegalovirus so there will be different infectious agent causing different and they also have the similar symptoms that we have studied morphology features are also similar the neutrophilic infiltrates and all that so this is the chemical infection uh, esophagitis then we have the last one that is the pill induced esophagitis pill induced esophagitis is that the, normally what happens that the uh, drugs or the pills that we eat they are normally dissolved in the stomach but if accidentally what happens that the pill is stuck in the esophagus 
and um, in the due to any reason maybe due to the narrowing lumen of the esophagus or some other reasons it is stuck and it dissolves in the esophagus when it is stuck and dissolves in the esophagus it may result into the esophagitis that is called as a pill induced esophagitis clear so these are the four types of the esophagitis that we have discussed here now i would like to discuss uh, two diseases a uh, very short uh, i need a small uh, time to discuss these diseases so there are two diseases that i have to discuss right now and then we will finish in the lecture so the first disease related to the esophagitis that's why i am writing here so that is the mallory vase pears basically this is the laceration of esophagus now what is the pathogenesis or what is the cause of the disease cause is that whenever there is a prolonged vomiting clear whenever patient is in the prolonged vomiting condition what happens this prolonged vomiting causes the tears in the esophagus lacerate the esophagus which is called as a mallory based tears now this uh, uh, condition it is not that much harmful it may self heal so this is a self healing condition now the second one disease that i was uh, i have to discuss that is the bor health disease syndrome now this is basically the perforation of esophagus remember this thing that this is perforation this is laceration how this occur this is basically what happens in this condition that the, there is esophageal distension sudden esophageal distension to such an extent that esophagus become perforated become ruptured and this is a very dangerous condition very alarming condition you need to uh, carry out the surgery immediately in this condition so this is the bor hair syndrome and this syndrome may resemble to the uh, mi or myocardial infarction or you can say the differential diagnosis of this will be myocardial infarction because the patient presents with the similar symptom like the tachypnea like the shock like the chest pain so this disease may resemble to the myocardial infarction or may confuse you with the myocardial infarction so with this our today's topic has been completed the esophagitis and its type and these two diseases that were related to the esophagus that's why i have discussed it right now thank you so much allah hafiz